how to rebuild your microbiome, your gut microbiome. Did you know that your gut could have up to 500 species, nearly 2 million genes of bacteria that weighs about 3 pounds? This bacteria is often called the microbiome and more specific, the entire set of microorganisms in your microbiota, bacteria, fungi, and viruses. They have a unique place and function inside your body. Bacteria makes up the majority of those cells, about 30 to 50 trillion. Is your gut microbiome rich and diverse? Because that is truly our goal. If you want to say, my gut microbiome is healthy, the same thing as you would say, my gut microbiome is very rich and diverse. Most of the microbes are present in the large intestine and they vary throughout the intestines. Common species found within the gut are bifido bacteria, lactobacillus, bacteritis, clostridium escherichia, streptococcus, and rumenococcus. Uh, when you look at who lives in our microbiome, we use both of the terms richness and diversity to describe them. Richness the number of total bacterial species. Diversity, the number of each type of bacterial species. The way I like to think about this is like this. Think of a large group of people in a room and we were to organize them by occupation. What would be richness? Richness would indicate the total number of different occupations present teachers, nurses, mechanics, right? Something like that. Diversity would be how many people of each occupation there are, there were at the group. 32 teachers, 96 nurses, 48 mechanics. And that's, if you're working with a functional medicine practitioner and they do a good functional gut test for you, all this could be uncovered. Just as in the community, we both understand when we both get the richness and diversity is high, is high, we get a stronger community, more resilient with immune system health. If there are, there's a lot of people with different specialties and there is a perfect person for each job. So very similar with our gut. Different species of bacteria play different roles within the gut. Are you a part of this group? When a patient comes to see a, a doctor, when my client comes to see me for the first time, I always use in-depth questionnaire, long introductory session, and I really would like to get to know them, their history, all the way to birth. Uh, we figure things out, we talk about diet, and even whether they were not or not were breastfed. During this process of analyzing the entire life history and how it relates to your health, I'm looking out for specific clues uh, that your microbiome might be imbalanced before even testing. Why, why do we do that? The microbiome is quite delicate. And the, the results can vary from one month to another, depending on what, of what has happened in your life. Um, and many things can disrupt that balance. For example, did you know that one round of antibiotics can decrease diversity by at least 30%? Clues that I'm looking for that might indicate that you are at high risk group for microbiome imbalance are follows. Born with C-section rather than vaginally, multiple rounds of antibiotics throughout life, low fiber diet, predominantly the sad diet. Yeah, I'm sure you probably discussed that before. Any chronic or autoimmune disease, sedentary lifestyle, long-term low carb or keto diet, anything long-term term without diversity is not a great thing. Stressful lifestyle, certain prescription medications, your age, travel history, did you go somewhere known for traveler's gut or traveler's diarrhea, past illnesses, a diet full of sugar, 
constipation, exposure to environmental toxins, tap water that's full of chemicals in your sink, in your faucet, uh, use of conventional skincare products, use of toxic cleaning supplies, living in the city versus living in the rural area, eating the same thing every single day. Yes, that could also get your microbiome out of balance not in, or not enough diversity, not eating enough quality or quantity of vegetables. There are more factors. Those are just a few. I'm always looking to piece together your unique history and what it might mean for the symptoms that you're currently experiencing. So now what? If you suspect an imbalanced microbiome, here are my top tips to begin rebuilding your gut microbiome. My top tips to rebuild diversity of the microbiome would be, number one, de-stress. Find time for yourself to unwind from all the hassle and bustle of metropolitan cities. Your mind and your gut affect each other equally. Next would be focus on high quality sleep. Disrupted, not enough sleep, not only promotes stress and low mood, but also obesity. Research shows that sleep deprivation accelerates weight gain because of its significant changes in your gut flora. Next would be consistent exercise, not once in a while kind of thing. Working out regularly helps create more bacterial diversity in the gut. Therefore, focus on increasing your good bacteria by keeping yourself physically active, even walking, walking <laughs> daily or every other day regularly can improve your gut microbiome. Avoiding these foods. Avoid sugar, artificial sweeteners, processed foods, and dairy and they can, because they can disrupt gut flora. Eat these foods. Increase your intake of raw nuts, herbs, greens, berries, wild foods, and whole grains. I recommend gluten-free, but it's up to you if you're lacking in them. These foods are full of fiber to support your microbiome. Take probiotics. Take high quality probiotics every day to boost healthy ecosystem in your gut flora. Next one is kind of tough, but I hope you would listen. Eat at home, mostly at least. Prepare your own meals that focus on whole foods that are not overly processed. Processed foods can impact the balance of good bacteria to bad bacteria. Next one is include fermented foods. Include lots of green vegetables, fermented foods in your diet like pickles, kimchi, kefir, um, coconut yogurt, miso, kombucha, low sugar kombucha, veggies, food for natural pro pro probiotics found in fermented foods. Drink filtered water. Most tap water, even if it's clean tap water found in the US and Canada can be pretty toxic. Even chlorine found in tap water can disrupt the microbiome. Eat the rainbow. I love that motto, eat the rainbow. When it comes to eating veg vegetables and fruit, they're chock full of phytonutrients, polyphenols, vitamins, minerals, and fiber that support the microbiome development. Each different color has different benefits. Consume enough fiber daily. Fiber contributes to a healthy microbiome by increasing diversity and helps produce short-chain fatty acids. Those are very important for anti-inflammatory effect. And in addition, fiber keeps things flowing through your digestive tract so that things don't become stagnant that can lead to overgrowth of bacteria that you do not want. Eat prebiotic foods. Prebiotics are good for good bacteria. It's important to always keep feeding the good guys. The bad guys, dry off of sugar and other common foods found in that sad diet, SAD. Common prebiotic foods include chicory root, dandelion greens, Jerusalem artichokes, garlic, onion, leeks, asparagus, and green bananas. Love those. So challenge time for you guys. Are you up to a three-day challenge? If yes, 
Research shows that only three days of clean eating can dramatically impact your gut microbiome. Here are the rules of the game. Three days of eating high quality, a lot of veggies, fruit, and I mean berries by fruit, not sweet fruit, and good amount of healthy, clean, lean proteins. And three days of avoiding sugar, gluten, dairy, packaged food, and alcohol. Let me know in the comments how it went. If you have any questions, you could always email me. Like the video, subscribe to my channel. This is Dr. Inai Digestive Reset. I welcome you to look into my free resources on the website. I have my two best-selling books on there for a free download and other free resources. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Dr. Ina at Digestive Reset.